Welcome to a review of a product that has been needing to be reviewed for a very long time. The Jackery Explorer 240. Now I know, I know, you've seen these things on everybody's channel reviewing them and promoting them for these companies, but they're kind of a necessity in van life. I mean, I use this thing almost every day, honestly, and I have a battery bank in my truck. I have been using this since the RTR of 2018, two years ago. Not this year, not 2020, not 2019, but 2018, yes. I got this from Jackery, uh, one of their product ambassadors at RTR in 2018, and I have been using it ever since. I mean, this has been a big part of my life, honestly. This is the first product that I ever got for review at no cost to me. So, disclaimer, this was provided to me at no cost by Jackery. Um, since then, I have also received the Jackery Solar Saga 100, 100 watt pa panel, and the Explorer 500. Um, after these reviews, I would really like to check out the new 1000, which is the answer to my biggest gripe about these types of systems. These have a PWM controller in them, and they're just kind of slow to charge. That's the biggest thing. Sometimes, if you don't have enough power going into them, they can't sustain your life on a daily basis because you just start pulling too much power out. This is made to go with a 60 watt panel. That's because when you plug a 60 watt panel or anything bigger into this, it can only take in a certain number of watts because it's limited by the PWM controller. I always call it the WPM, the PWM controller. Just to my left here, you can see my new battery bank from Lion Energy. This is a lithium bank that is gonna replace the AGMs I have. The bread truck has a pretty decent 4 AGM uh, solar battery bank in it and a lot of solar on the roof that charges them very quickly, but it's not enough to last through the whole night with the way I use it. That's where this has come in. I have run my computer system for close to three hours off of this system alone. Now, I don't have like a regular computer system. I had a desktop, full tower, a monitor, and powered... PC speakers that had an 8 inch subwoofer so it wasn't taking a small amount of power and it ran that for two to three hours which was great when my battery bank got super low in the truck and I had to turn it off I had the fear of damaging my batteries I would switch to this and I would get an extra two to three hours of editing or rendering and uploading um, time on this I've taken so much footage over the years that I've had this and used it, and I've just never been able to put together a good review video, but this is a long-term review of the Jackery 240. I can go through and cut in some old clips and stuff, but maybe just keep it simple. Let me talk to you about the features that the Jackery has. It has a very basic um, control panel display, but it is adequate. It has enough information in here, and I like the information that it provides. Okay, I'm going to hold it up nice and close here. You can see on one side has output, the other side has input, and at the bottom is a percentage, a numerical percentage of how much battery power you have left. It also has the old school battery icon with uh, little bars that show, but it shows the percentage. That for me is a big deal. Uh, it's very easy to control. To turn the power on, all you have to do is choose which input you want on. If you're only going to use USB, you can turn on just the USBs. If you're going to use just the car adapter port, you can turn on just the car adapter port. And if you want to turn on just the uh, inverter for 120 volt, you can push that and just turn the inverter on. You can also use all of them at the same time. And you can be charging at the same time. So one of the interesting ideas I had about this unit is the ability to use it as your main solar system and have this be your entire battery bank and solar charge controller and inverter and everything. I think it would work for some applications. You throw a, I don't know, 50 watt panel on your roof so it's out there all the time. Maybe give it the ability to tilt because you'll want to get a little bit of extra time if you want to get up there and tilt it. But 
if you had this plugged in and running, um, you know, like a laptop and phone chargers and lights in your truck or rig, your van life rig, I think you could do it with this if you had very minimal power requirements. Very minimal. To put this in perspective of how this would compare to a regular battery system that's in a truck or uh, say the bread truck, I have four AGM batteries. That's 190 usable amp hours of power. This little battery is 16.8 amp hours. So it's much smaller than the whole battery system in the bread truck, but it's kind of a lot for just this little thing. One of these Lion Energy lithium batteries is 105 amp hours. So you're talking 16.8 and 105. So this one doesn't have a power inverter or any outlets of any kind or a charge controller as well. This is just a battery with the BMS in it. So just to give you a little perspective of what a 105 amp hour battery is like compared to a 16.8 amp hour battery. My favorite things about this is its size. It's super small and it's super convenient. Now you can throw this in a backpack and be able to plug in things anywhere I am and I have done that in numerous occasions. If I need lights, this can run a pretty good amount. This has a 200 watt power inverter that's pure sine wave built in. That's pretty dang good. I have run into some things that it can't run. For example, I have a jigsaw, a plug-in Black & Decker jigsaw construction, you know, like uh, woodworking tool, and it's just a little too big to, for this to run it. Um, I've hooked it up to the Jackery 500 and it does run it with no problem. Um, it runs a lot of good things. Um, like I said, it'll run my entire computer system. This is good for I have a lot of power demands. I'm always charging things. So if I'm charging cell phones and laptops and all, you know, drone batteries and everything, this lasts me for about an, one night. Like I said, if I was using my desktop computer with a monitor and powered PC speakers, this would last for about two to three hours. But one thing about it is that it does take a long time to charge. You plug it into even 110 volts from the wall you're still talking, it's only bringing in like 65 watts, I believe. It takes several hours to charge this thing back up. I've tried using the solar panel with these to charge them, and for me, it's just way too high maintenance. Um, if the wind starts blowing, it could get blown over. You have to move it to follow the sun all day long, and then you realize how quickly the sun does move because you're constantly moving that solar panel to get the maximum amount of charge. To me, I'd rather have a mounted solar panel that I could plug this into that's on the roof rack of my car or van or truck of some kind and never have to touch it and I could just plug in and leave it sit there. I've even considered the option of maybe wiring a DC panel from this car adapter port. If you could run this out and split it for a couple ceiling fans or refrigerator and maybe lights. That way, it's more of a permanent thing. You bring this inside your truck, you could take it inside a house and charge it and bring it back right to your truck and plug in the things that are permanently wired really easily and still have it be portable. So many good things about the system. I really like it a lot. Now let's come down to the price. The price on this is $250. It's a pretty hefty price. If you have to get a solar panel to go with it, you know, that's getting up into, you know, several hundreds of dollars, four hundred dollars, something like that. I don't know if I would actually invest that into this. It may be a little bit too small for my needs. But having said that, if I had a minivan or maybe a Volkswagen bus or something and very, very minimal power needs, this might be enough. The biggest downside is that it doesn't have an MPPT solar charge controller. If this could just charge fast, even though it's small, it would be a super awesome thing, but they just didn't come with them. They all have PWM controllers, and um, now these companies are getting on board and putting the new stuff in them so that they do charge faster. So what else do I have to say about the Jackery 240? Would I buy it? Would I not? Do I recommend it? Do I not? It's hard to say. I really love the thing. That being said, it was provided to me for free, so I didn't have to feel the cost of it and 
really, you know, like, it's, it's hard for me to say. I don't think I would honestly buy a $250 unit like this. I would just want something with a lot more power, which of course would cost a lot more dollars. Is it a great system? Yes, I think it's awesome. You could get by living for a long time with the bare necessities with a Jackery 240. So that's it. That's all I got for the Jackery 240 Explorer. I've been needing to do this video for a very long time, so I finally put one together and told you my thoughts about the Jackery. I think it's awesome. Is it worth the money? That's up to you. But it is an awesome product and I've experienced no faults with it whatsoever. It's been completely flawless performance from day one and it's a very powerful little system. I'm a big fan. I use it every day. For those that have a big battery system, it's a great little jumper pack to get you from place to place. You have to leave your truck, you can bring this along, keep it charged up, it's awesome and very portable super light. Anyways, thank you Jackery for being so patient with me on getting this video out. We'll be hearing more about the Jackery uh, 240 versus the 500 versus other brands like Rock Pals and Max Oak and EcoFlow, Lion Energy. We'll be seeing you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Smash the like and subscribe button and I will talk to you soon. Bye Jackery. Thank you. You're awesome. See you next time.